enjoy. Good evening, folks. Uh, oops. Uh, good evening, folks. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Sorry about the wait. Uh, my name is Raghav. Um, I'm, a, I'm a student at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and uh, over the last summer, I've been working on a little bit of adversarial machine learning. And uh, for those of who, you who don't know uh, adversarial machine learning, it's basically uh, you want to fool or break the machine learning algorithm. And uh, so um, there's a lot of hype around AI these days. Uh, you know, from from machine translation, you can translate from French to English. Uh, a lot of image recognition. Your your iPhones have your facial recognition. Uh, lots of um, hype around the self-driving car. Um, which I, I personally don't believe in, but hey, um, it's good to live in the dream, I guess. Um, so lots of people following that track, and uh, supposedly mach machine learning and AI is going to be the next big change. Um, you know, so machine learning is basically based on a concept that we, uh, the, the machines, think like humans, and uh, so especially in visual computing. Uh, when you have these facial detectors and uh, you know self-driving cars, that so so it really begs the question: How does the computer look at uh, images, and uh, you know how are they different in perception as we look at objects? Um, so it turns out uh, that computers look at extremely differently, and uh, so the images you see here are 32-bit float, and uh, you know. So it turns out that in a machine learning classifier, so first of all, uh, neural networks, if, if you guys have heard about it, have recently achieved human level performance. And uh, they've been really successful and you know, they've been deploy, deployed in your iPhones and stuff. Uh, but turns out you can actually introduce a perturbation or as you can, you can see a random noise out here um, that looks random to the human eye but if you add that noise to your original image, can completely misclassify the output. So if you look at the school bus here, so this is one of the perceptions of machine learning, and it gets classified as school bus. Now, this is another perception of a school bus by the computer, and uh, this is based on the direct uh, encoding. So you basically are looking at a pixel level mapping. And here's uh, the second picture, uh, the stripes one, is an indirect encoding. So you basically take a pixel you're, and you're trying to map a pattern uh, on the nearest neighbors. And uh, so surprisingly, you know, with the human level performance uh, of these neural networks, you're able to get these perceptions. And hey, these are not school buses. So uh, why are these algorithms being deployed in, you know, facial recognition and self-driving cars. Uh, another example is, uh, you know, uh, these from top to bottom uh, are the representations of zero. So this is what zero looks like um, if you visualize inside a neural network and you look at the intermediate layers. Um, so something really sketchy is going on inside. and. Uh, so there was this concept introduced by a few researchers from uh, Google Brain. And uh, so they took this image of a panda, and uh, so they passed it on onto a machine learning classifier, and they got about 57% confidence that, hey, it's a panda. Um, then they add this visually imperceptible noise, which is imperceptible to the humans, but when they add that noise, it gets completely misclassified as a gibbon. So to give you a perspective, um, if your self-driving car tomorrow uh, misclassifies a green light as a stop sign, or a stop sign as a green light. Um, so that's a precarious situation. Um, uh, moreover, um, last year, I think, um, so a couple of researchers, again from Google, showed that um, you know, when you take these so-called perturbed images, adversarial images, and you print them out on a sheet of paper, and you 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 s feed them as an image digitally. Uh, again, uh, it still gets misclassified. So 
Here you see the image. Uh, so they actually printed it out on a paper, uh, the noise, uh, the noisy image, and it, it got misclassified by the uh, algorithm. So um, that shows that these perturbed images, these noisy images that can fool the classifier can exist in real world. They also tried that with a 3D turtle. So they actually 3D printed a turtle uh, with these noisy images, and uh, this was able to misclassify. So I don't know if you can see it, but it gets misclassified as a ri rifle over there. And that's not a rifle. But any, any guesses where the noise is in this image, in the turtle image? Any guess? No. Yes, uh, that's, the, that's the right answer. So the noise is right here. So that can, that, oh, sorry about that, but, um, so yeah, um, a lot of been, a lot of work has been done on this and people have uh, gone crazy, researchers have gone crazy on this. They've released about 15 new attacks um, depending on optimization and gradient based. And, um, but they all share one common thing, that you try to find the internal structure of what's going on and you try to replicate it, and then you try to fool it by going in an opposite direction. So, and uh, so this, these attacks can be carried out in two ways. One is the untargeted and the targeted. So by untargeted, it can just uh, misclassify to anything else, whereas targeted is the most dangerous one because uh, you can actually target what you want to misclassify it. So uh, as I said, you can misclassify a stop sign to a green green light. And that's a, that's a dangerous situation. Uh, again, white box and black, black box, um, if the attacker or the adversary knows uh, what kind of network you're using or algorithm. Um, another interesting thing uh, last year, so this is one of my friends from Google. And uh, so he's working on um, these adversarial noisy things. Uh, not just for images, they can actually also exist for speech. So let's look at this. Uh, I don't know if, not, if it's going to give me a... Did you guys hear it? Sorry about the guys in the back. But it says, without the data set, the article is useless. And uh, that's the original output. So this is basically a speech to text conver converter that, that's used in Siri and uh, Google, Google Now. Um, and uh, when, this, when this speech is passed on, so the output is, without the data set, the article is useless. But if, I, if, uh, if they passed on a slightly noisier version of it, So it's still the sp same speech, but the, the text that they get is, okay, Google, browse to evil.com. So that's kind of sketchy, right? So if you take your phone and say, Siri, hey, you know, what's the weather outside? And it takes you to a malicious site. So you don't want that. So uh, the point being that uh, these adversarial uh, things, they, they, they just don't exist for images. They exist for speech. They can exist for, for text as well. and uh, Another interesting thing is that they're not specific to neural networks. They can, they're, they're spread across all, all these networks. So why do they exist, right? And I mean, what's, what's the reason why, why these things are happening? I mean, uh, we're just passing on simple images and asking the algorithm to learn. So the, the, the reason is a little mathematical, but um, I'll, I'll lay it out as, uh, simple as possible. So a neural network or a machine learning algorithm tries to be nonlinear. So let's say a cubic equation or x to the power 5, x to the six. So a neural network is typically to the power 100 or in, in, in hundreds of dimensions, thousands of dimensions. So it's extremely nonlinear. But the nonlinearity li lies in, it, in its parameters, but the input and output are still very linear. So imagine you're, you're separating A from B, and let's say it's a linear boundary. And so 
the distance between A and B is still small. So you can point or find a space in the opposite class and you know try uh, try and mis uh, misclassify it. Where are these uh, adversarial images being used? So uh, the ones, uh, the CAPTCHAs, I I'm sure most of you must have seen this. So to, to find out if, a person is a if it's a person or a robot. Um, so now with all these state-of-the-art neural networks and you, know, you can do image recognition with human le level performance, these CAPTCHAs are useless. So they're replacing these images with adversarial images so that the robots cannot uh, you know, recognize it. Um, another indirect application of adversarial or these noisy images are generative adversarial networks. So it's basically a combination of two networks uh, that combine to produce an output. So for example, this guy, um, the horse, oh, I'm sorry, the horse, so they feed in two images. One is the horse, one is the zebra and it is able to generate a probability distribution that converts it from a horse to the zebra. And you can, you can use this for generating more images. So it's basically a computer's perception, a, a machine learning algorithm's perception of the images that it can generate. Um, this can be used for more data generation for machine learning or can be used for you know, applications like these style transfer. So interestingly, uh, a bunch of researchers were able to transfer style from Picasso, Picasso's paintings to uh, regular images of people uh, and kind of mix it up. Um, but adversarial images, you know, they're malicious, they're, they're harmful, but they're not perfect. Um, so interestingly, simple operations on adversarial images, if you crop the, the image, so let's look at the guy here. And uh, the, the dog here, so the adversarial image gets misclassified as a tennis ball. And look at the confidence score, 75.65. So it's, it's still, it's pretty confident. But if you crop it or magnify this, it returns back to its or original class, Labrador Retriever. So that's very interesting. So, it's, so that means it's, there is ex existing a very specific pattern in that image that is only uh, maintained if you do not make these input transformations. Same thing for um, brightness, right? So um, in the case here, it gets misclassified as a tennis ball, again, with 70, 75% accuracy. In the second case, when I increase the brightness by 50%, it still remains tennis ball by 76%. But if you increase the brightness too much, it Switch, switches back to its or original class. So the reason I'm showing you all these is that, okay, adversarial images are scary, but if they cannot withstand change of brightness, cropping, magnification, how can they exist in the real world? Because in the real world, your self-driving cars are not gonna look at your images at only one angle or only one size. So it's gonna be a, d a variety of sizes or a variety of lighting conditions. Um, I'm gonna skip over this. So again, coming back to the point that can adversarial images actually fool self-driving cars and detectors? Answer is no. At, at the moment, no. And uh, you know, a simple illustration here. Um, so this is the original image, this is the adversarial image. And uh, I'm not sure if it is large enough, but it still classifies both of them as a person. And the reason being is that when you have some, uh, so, uh, like these croppings. So for example, this bounding box is a cropping operation, so it loses its adversarial property. So at the moment, detectors and self-driving cars are not susceptible to uh, adversarial examples. Um, but still, uh, your, your simple algorithms are still very susceptible. Uh, so for example, your facial recognition, uh, people, uh, the researchers were able to fool iPhones, facial recognition, models by, by adversarial images. Um, so is training on these images a solution? It might be, but it's, it's too um, bulky. You, you need to generate too many corner cases. It's like testing a code. 
if you, you're a developer, you need to find all the extreme cases. But, but what, what if you have a thousand extreme cases? So it becomes kind of cumbersome to find all those extreme cases, I guess. Um, so yeah, adversarial images are still a very prominent problem. Um, yeah, it's still a very common problem. Um, people are working on a lot of uh, defensive str uh, strategies and uh, people are also working on extending these to detectors, as I showed you, um, for the cropping operations and stuff. That's it. Thank you. Um, any questions? So the way it works is, um, I'll, I'll show you. So if you see the sig the epsilon term um, here, which is 0 0.07, so that term actually determines how much you're perturbing your image. So it, it kind of becomes like a beam search. You wanna you wanna have a, a balance between how much you wanna perturb your image. So it's a it's a strong perturbation, strong misclassification, but you also don't don't wanna perturb it too much. Otherwise, it becomes um, perceptible to the human eye. So uh, the more you increase the epsilon, the computation increases, but there's a trade-off. I, in fact, used um, all, the, all the possible networks. And uh, one, one interesting fact is when you, so if you're, if you're familiar with most of the image recognition models. So another interesting thing about adversarial images is that they don't transfer very well. So for example, if you use a VGG-based network and a ResNet, uh, if you generate from VGG, they don't fool the ResNet. And so there's some transferability issues out there. Uh, there's this really cool uh, library by Google called Cleverhands. It's maintained by one of their, their security staff and uh, that's, that's really cool, that's what I used. Okay, thank you.